Okay, so now we're gonna look at something I like to call a type two integration by parts problem. And so these are generally of the form, a transcendental function times a transcendental function. And they most often show up as an exponential, a sine or a cosine times an exponential, a sine or a cosine dx. So let's look at one particular example of this. So e to the x sine x dx, this antiderivative. And so we'll have to do integration by parts. So that means we need to pick our u and we need to pick our dv. So let's let this be u and then let's let all the rest sine x dx be dv. <coughs> So let's see what that does. So if we let u equal e to the x, that means du equals e to the x dx. And then if we let dv equal sine x dx, that means that v is equal to negative cosine x, because the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And then using our integration by parts formula, which if you remember is u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du, that allows us to write this integral as u times v, so that'll be minus e to the x cosine x, and then minus the integral of v du. So notice the minus signs cancel and then we get plus the integral of e to the x <coughs> cosine of x dx. And now you notice we've got something that's fairly similar to the original integral, which really gives us the hint that maybe we'll have to do integration by parts again. So let's do that and let's do the same kind of thing. Let's let this be u and let's let this be dv and see what happens. So if that's u, u is e to the x, that means du is again e to the x dx. And then if dv equals cosine x dx, that means v equals sine x. And now we're all set. So if we bring this down, we'll say we still have our minus e to the x cosine x from before. Now we have plus our new u times v, so plus e to the x sine x minus the integral of our new v du. So that'll be minus the integral of e to the x sine x. And for a second it looks like we've just gone in a circle and we haven't gotten anywhere because we need to do integration by parts again. But then if you notice that we started with the integral of e to the x sine x and we ended up with something in terms of the integral of e to the x sine x. So if we set this equal to i, notice that here we have found the integral i again. And so that sets up a algebraic equation, i equals now I'm going to switch this to, so I don't have a hanging minus sign, e to the x times sine x minus cosine x minus i. So there we've got it. We can easily solve this for i to give us i equals one half e to the x sine x minus cosine x. And then we can add our constant of integration for good measure, and that's the final answer.